Asana's task templates is one of my favorite features in Asana to show new clients because of the impact it can have on your business. Task templates are great for managing repeatable processes so you can be more efficient, reduce errors, and create more scalable systems for your business. Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. Now today's video has two parts. In part one, I'm gonna show you how to create a task template from scratch and the different features and options available. And in part two, I'm gonna show you some actual task templates that we use at my business so that you can see how the Asana experts use this feature for day-to-day -day repeatable processes. If you have any questions at the end of this video, leave me a comment down below. And if you'd like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or onboarding your team to Asana, then click the link in the description below to book an introductory call with our team to learn more about our Asana consulting and support options. Let's get into it. Firstly, I want to point out that task templates and project templates as well for that matter, is part of the starter, subscription and hire. So if you are on Asana's free plan, unfortunately you will have to upgrade to get this feature. You can click the link in the description below to request a quote from us. We are an Asana solutions partner and we can provide discounts on the retail pricing if you'd like to sign up for a paid plan. Now, when you create a task template, Task templates are created inside projects. So for this example, I'm gonna create a new project. We'll just do a blank project. I'll just call this demo for now so that I've got um, a project to work from. And with your project ready, you can then click on the customize button in the top right hand corner. This is where you can customize this individual project using task templates. It's also where you can apply customization for things like adding custom fields, rules, forms, and so on. And so that's just the first thing to bear in mind or consider when creating task templates is you need to think about which project do I want this task template to live in? Now, if you want to create task templates in multiple projects, we really don't want to have to create them multiple times because then if you update the template, you have to update it in multiple places. The alternative there is to then use what's called a bundle. Now, bundles is an enterprise feature, so you will need to be on the higher enterprise subscription to use this feature. Instead, then you will be able to create an enterprise in a bundle and any projects connected to the bundle can use that template. So that's a much better option if you do want to use the same template and apply that across dozens of projects at once. For now, I'm just gonna click here into the task templates and I'm gonna click add to create my first template. Now, templates are most useful for any kind of repeatable processes or work that you need to do. For example, let's pretend I am running a digital marketing agency and one of the things we need to do for our clients on a regular basis is an SEO audit. And so I wanna create a template that captures all the steps and a bit of a checklist really of what we need to do for an audit. So I'm gonna call this SEO audit. That's just the name of my task. Now, the parent task here, I can pre-assign. So let's say I'm always the person that does this task. So when I use this template, the task is gonna be assigned to me because I'm the SEO person at my agency. I can also choose to set a relative due date. So when I create this task, I can say, um, this task is gonna be due in seven days. So at the time I use the template, I'm gonna have seven days to create, uh, to, to complete this task. That's how my due date is going to be set. I can, if I need to, um, I can multi-home this task template into multiple projects. So for example, as well as using this task template in the project that I'm working in, maybe I also need this, um, this template, uh, this task that gets created to be added to my operations project as well. I could choose to multi-home it if I need to, but I won't, I won't do that for this example. And finally, I can add dependencies if I need to um, link this task to other tasks that are dependent um, that need to be done first. In the description here, it's a good idea to use the description for capturing important information or, or almost prompting your team of the information that needs to be input. For example, let's just say I have client name, uh, website, hosting provider, uh, let's just say average Google ranking. So I could, I could have these sort of um, almost like prompts. I'm going to go and fill that in later when I use the task template. And this just reminds me of the information I need to provide. And then really the, the bulk of what we're doing in, in a task template is setting up 
subtasks to act as a checklist or to outline the steps that we need to complete. So for my SEO audit, the first thing we need to do is analyze backlinks. Actually, maybe even before that, we have get access to uh, um, analytics. So maybe we'll put that first, actually. Analyze backlinks, um, evaluate on page um, content, and so on. So here we go. I filled in a few more subtasks now. Now, what I would also recommend is clicking into each of these subtasks. And on the right hand side, this is where we can add additional information. And this is where you should think about a task template as where you can create a standard operating procedure or SOP in Asana. And I'll show you some examples in a few minutes of exactly how we've done that. I have our task template set up in a way where I could assign the task to somebody who's never done that task before. And there's enough instruction and detail in here that you could just go and do the task without me actually having to tell you what to do. Each of these subtasks I can also assign. So maybe uh, Lindsay on my team does these first couple here. She's always the one responsible for those, those ones. And then let's just say Warwick, he's the one that always does um, the next few there. So I'm gonna pre-assign those to the, the relevant or most um, appropriate individual. And then similar to the dates before, I can set relative due dates. So if this is gonna be due in seven days, I want to get access to the analytics on day one, day one, this can be on day two, let's say do two to four, this could also be two to four, and let's just keep going through that. So there we go, I've got my, so there we go, I've got my dates ready to go now. Now, a couple of other things I can do in this template is I can change the task type, either the parent task itself, so at the moment this parent task is just set up as a task. I could, if I want to, say this is actually a milestone. When I use this task template in the project, it's gonna create a milestone, or I could set it up as an approval. Um, I actually quite like the idea of doing it as a milestone. I feel like an SEO audit would be a big deliverable. And I can do the same thing for these individual subtasks. So I can change this to be a milestone, or let's say I want to do an approval. I could say approve report before sending. Maybe that's something that I do, and I'm gonna do that on day seven. And I could say, right, this, this, this subtask rather is gonna be an approval. So it changes the output options of that task. A uh, couple of other things to, work, uh, to note, you can attach files, um, images, you know, any, anything links you can put in here. So you can put in plenty of detail as needed. I think this is good. Let's, let's save that now. And now let me show you how to use it. So now my task template is ready. Let's close that customize menu. Instead of creating a task from scratch over here, I can click the down arrow and now here's my template ready to go. So I'm gonna use the template. Asana's gonna take a minute to set up the task and you can see the due date has been set. It's due seven days from today, which is August 6th. All of my subtask due dates have been set accordingly as well. And now I can go in and put in the details. So the, the client's name, and so on, and I can fill that out. And now I can use this task template as many times as I want within this project. So as you can see, pretty simple and straightforward to set up. Now we use task templates all the time in my business. Let me show you a couple of examples of fully built out task templates that we actually use so that you can see how the experts do it. In our content project, this is where we plan the videos that we're gonna make for YouTube, like this video you're watching right now. We planned this, uh, actually here's the task, for this video that we're working on. And this task we created using a template. So if I go to our customize menu task templates, you can see we have a bunch of templates in our content project here. Firstly, we have different templates for different types of videos with the Asana, Pipedrive and Zapier videos. We use different templates because the notes in here, like the description and keywords, we have different links and different descriptions based on the type of video. So with an Asana video, the first thing is I have to record the video in short, which I'm doing now. We've got editing, preparing the thumbnail, and I've got little notes here on how to do that. Um, video cards that we add, and again, we've got links that we always use and the call to actions, etc. 
we have, this is the default description we put in every one of our videos. We have that set up in our template um, so that we are being, as I said in the intro, very consistent. We don't miss steps. We use the same links and descriptions every single time. In this one, drafting the WordPress post, this is an example of using the template as an SOP or standard operating procedure. So when this gets assigned to Judy on my team, she has all the instructions of what she needs to do to prepare the post. Now, she's done this hundreds of times. She knows what to do. She doesn't have to read this every time. But the idea here is that if I ever had somebody else in this role preparing the um, WordPress post, they've got the instructions here ready to go. They can even watch a video that I've recorded and I could give this task to somebody who's never done it before. And if they just follow those instructions, they could go and do the task without me having to give them any kind of guidance. That is what I think a good template should do, is, is provide enough detail where you could just go and execute. You can see in R1, we've got examples here of, um, this is actually an approval. So once the broadcast or newsletter is ready to go, I have to approve that. So that approval comes to me and we've actually created dependencies here. So this approval can't be done. It's blocked by the drafting broadcast and this approval is blocking the scheduling. So John here who does the scheduling, he knows that he can't schedule this until I've done the approval. So we've linked our subtasks using dependencies. So that's an example of one of our um, video templates. In our operations project, I have um, a task template for onboarding a new contractor. Um, there's various steps we have to take. We have to invite them to our different tools like Google Workspace um, and our shared drive. We have to invite them to Asana and Pipedrive and we've got details in here. I even, I assign some of the subtasks to the new contractor and we have uh, here an example of updating your pipe drive settings. And I've got um, details here of what they need to do, including screenshots. So they can follow the instructions and they have screenshots telling them exactly how they need to have their pipe drive settings configured. Again, really good example of you basically building an SOP natively into Asana into one of your task templates. And one more example from this leadership project, I have a task template for paying uh, an Asana invoice when we have to pay Asana for a subscription for one of our customers. A couple of checklist items here, we have to update a custom field in Pipedrive to show what we've been charged. Um, we update budgets in some of our tools, we update some of our spreadsheets, and we have to download the proof of payment. So even for just small little processes like this, paying an invoice, we have a simple checklist so that we're updating various reporting uh, spreadsheets and so on, and we're not missing important steps. Actually, let me just show you one more bonus example from our client's project. Um, we have various subtasks that we use to add, um, or task templates rather, that we use to add subtasks to our client tasks. So if we need to do a Pipedrive account review, we can use this template and it's just got some details here of the types of things we need to check when doing a review of someone's account. Now, you may be wondering, Paul, when would you use a task template instead of a recurring task? Because I can just set up tasks to repeat if I want to do them on a recurring basis. Uh, good question, I thought you might ask this. <laughs> so, I would use a recurring task if I want to be reminded to complete a repeatable piece of work if that task needs to be done every single week, like every Monday or every month or every quarter. Whereas I would use a task template if the due date is a little bit more sporadic or if I want to plan lots of tasks at once. So like planning a video, I wouldn't set up that as that those tasks up as recurring tasks because I want to plan a month or two months worth of videos and have them scheduled out into the future. So I'm much better off using a task template or if it's not any kind of repeatable frequency, for instance, paying invoices, they don't necessarily get paid every Monday, the due dates are always different. So again, I'm gonna use a task template to create my task and set the due date manually for that, whatever invoice needs to be paid. If you found this video useful, give it a like and leave me a comment down below, share your ideas. What are you going to use task templates for? Comment down below and it'd be great to see all the types of things that people are doing with task templates to get some ideas. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.